Okay, so this is a 2011 Fairline Phantom 48, and I can't believe I've never, ever filmed one. So today, I'm gonna do all the normal walk around. I'm gonna do a full breakdown of all the costs, how much it costs to run and everything. And then for the first time ever, and I know you might be thinking, what the hell are you doing, James? But the first time ever, we're gonna tell you how much we earn from these boats. Yeah. We are, Dan. Well, we tell everyone else, so we might as well tell the whole world. So let's get to it. But before we do that, um, I just want you to see what, tell me what you think of my new jacket. What do you think, Dan? And I've got some funky socks, which have only made one previous showing on the, uh, on the YouTube channel. So come and have a look. I know you're dying to know about the socks. Well, these ones are the shark eating leg ones. Can you see? That's his mouth. That's his eyes. Look. And he's eating both my legs. Look. He's a vicious shark. And actually, they're really, really uncomfortable. Um, and they're really stupid, aren't they? They look, they look awful, to be honest. But someone sent them in and said, look, I found these stupid socks. So I thought I'd wear them. <laughs> right. So um, this Phantom 48 was made from 2007 to 2011. And the reason I know that is because we sold them. Do you remember, Dan? We used to sell them, new. Um, this one's had a little bit of a refit, which we've just completed. And we sold this boat new to her one and only owner. And we've just sold it again to um, another gentleman who cannot wait to get his hands on it in the next week or so. So really, really good boat cockpit as you can see is absolutely massive and if you thought the cockpit was massive wait till you see how big the lazarette hatch is Dan look I'm not going to go in there oh crikey oh, yeah. but look how big that hatch is oh <laughs> and that gets you to the d9 575 engines which we may or may not come back to later, depending on how we get on with the rest of the boat. Um, now, these boats, when they came out, the big thing was mid-master cabins. So this was Fairline's first ever mid-master cabin. It hasn't got the high-low platform. So if you look at the back here, you've got the passerelle, which acts as the passerelle, and it acts as the crane. And those four little spikes there is when the, where the chocks go to put your dinghy but this bit doesn't go high and low and that's the difference between a 2011 boat like this and some of the much newer boats that we sell so let's jump inside so as you walk into the saloon the first thing you'll notice is that Fairline updated the cabinetry about this time to this is called American white oak uh, but it's actually not white and actually it's it's a slightly yellow color but it looks very nice in the flesh. Um, it might look different on the screen, but it's actually a really nice color. We've redone the sofas on this boat, which would have been, I think, leather in the, in the day. Leather was, yeah, same as the helm seat. So in the day, these would have been leather, but these days, 80 or 90% of new boats we sell have fabric like this, which is much more comfortable to sit on. And you've, if you haven't got young kids throwing food about, it doesn't matter. You might as well have the fabric. You've got a high-low TV which comes up here, and this is where they started to build up more glass. So you've got a lot more glass, but it's all the very, very high quality you'd expect from Fairline with the lovely grab rails. See those, Dan? And look at the hinges here. Really, really nicely made, heavy-duty hinges. Just never go wrong. So moving up to the helm, I will show you the shout window. Now, the trouble with gizmos on boats is they normally don't work. But when Fairline make a gizmo, they make sure it works. So come and have a look at my James Bond dashboard, Dan, from 2011. Press this button here, and is it going to work? Woohoo! It works. So you've got the engine gauges, the temperature, the revs, the fuel. Obviously, one port, one starboard, because these do have two fuel tanks, you know, one for each engine. And you press a button, and you've got the view out of the window, which is very nice. 
Now this boat has also got a shout window and it's quite quiet on the marina today so there's going to be no one about. I can't get my head through there though. <laughs> oh god. Oi! Get the fenders in! It's actually, it, it's not the biggest window actually. I don't know if my head's, I don't know if, I don't know if my head's got bigger or fatter. I, I've actually, I've carried, I've carried on losing weight, Dan. Very good. I've lost a little bit more, <laughs> believe it or not. And I didn't look it. <laughs> um, and you've got EVC controls. We've got um, all the usual things. We've got autopilot. We've got the um, Garmin GPS. Um, this is the bow thruster, which is not on, luckily. And port, red and green, starboard controls. I love these throttles. Do you know why I like them, Dan? No, go on. If you stand behind me, and I will, you have to get, kind of get over my shoulder, so you might have to just get up there. The reason why I like them, and you might not know this, see they're curved yep, inwards. inwards. When you put that one ahead, mm -hmm. the boat kicks out. So actually, when you're teaching people how to drive, when you, when you have these throttles, they just can see that that's the bow of the boat, that's the stern, and the, when you put that one ahead, it's going to kick the back out, and that's what it does, doesn't it? And vice versa. And vice versa, yeah. And the other one, if you do that, it kicks us in, but that wouldn't be a good idea because there's a pontoon there, son. It's a bit like driving a tank. It's a bit like driving a tank. It's not yeah. like a tank. No, but it's very easy. Generator start, VHF. We've got the Webasto um, air conditioning controller here. And it's all very nice. And while we're also up here, Dan, the trip switches... Now, why other manufacturers don't use these, I don't know. These switches hardly ever go wrong. I mean, this boat's now, what, 12, 13 years old, and everything still works. So let's go downstairs to the galley. This is the galley, and... Step why not? It's been re-varnished. Re okay. I'm not allowed to step on the floor because it's been re-varnished. Now, the galley, a lower galley, which was the fashion at the time, is slightly smaller than you might expect on a 48 foot boat um, and if there's anything that's slightly compromised on this boat the galley is but actually it's still very practical um, you've got the fridge you've got the hob the microwave all the storage i'm not going to open them all up and there's a big storage locker there it works absolutely fine so behind me is the vip behind dan is the master and to starboard is the bunk beds and to port is the day head. So this boat is a three cabin boat, but most of the customers we sold it to use the two cabins for them and their kids. And they use this room as luggage or for the third or fourth child if they had them. So three cabin shaft drive with flybridge. It's a very, it packs a lot of punch for, for this type of boat. So the forward cabin, if you come in, it's got loads of space. You've got loads of storage here. It's got a, a TV on the wall here, and we've got a Jack and Jill, Dan, if you just pop in. We've got a Jack and Jill uh, door, which takes you into the heads, which I'll show you in a second. But all these cupboards have got storage, and you can see the woodwork is still excellent. Got a sun hatch there, air vent there. It does what it's supposed to do. And you've also got, do you know what else it's got, Dan? Go on. Which you tend to only get on Fairlines or the better quality brands, is it's got the little reading lights. Has it got a charger? Um, yeah, there's a plug socket down here, son. Now, do you read at night when you go to bed? No. Well, you should, because it's very good. My wife does. It's very good to read a book because it helps you go to sleep. So let's go look at the other cabins. Uh, Dan, this is the bathroom. Yeah, you can just put your head in. Oh, no, but I'll, no, I've got to do the floss test. I've got to do the floss test. I haven't done one for a while. Right, floss test, okay. So I can get in the shower. It is, it, I must admit, it is a little tight. Okay, it definitely doesn't pass the floss test for me with the shower door open. But if I leave the door open, and, sh and I'm not going to shut that door on you, but I can get through here but I've got to be honest with you it is slightly tight but you can't have everything okay Dan stick your head in there that's the bunk bedroom that bunk folds up and down and that one's fixed and you've got the air conditioner and the plug sockets and your reading lights and a tv 
and it makes a very good and reliably informed booze and wine storeroom. So if we walk further aft, we've then got the uh, ensuite for the master, which actually, Dan, is a lot bigger and therefore easily passes the floss test. But here is the master, and in 2007, when this boat came out, mid-masters were only just starting to come onto the market. Sunseeker made the Manhattan 50 with the mid-master, and this is Fairline's first attempt. But if you come and creep in, Dan, you'll see, I think they did quite a nice job. Got lovely big windows. I think there's a washing machine in here, if I remember. Uh, he didn't tick that option. So there isn't a washing machine, but you can have a washing machine. Um, you've got loads of windows, loads of storage. Was there a TV that popped up here? Oh, TV's up there, okay. And the window, you've got a little cabinet here. Look at the wardrobe. It's got some bits in it, no, not mine. Um, the only thing that does compromise in this room, you'll see that I've, um, I'm on my knees, but if you stand up, I can stand it up, I'm six foot one ish but as you can see there's little bits where you have to so when you go to lie down you have to you can't walk up all around the bedroom but all in all it's a really nice cabin so let's go and look at the fly right okay so this is the fly bridge we're not going to spend much time up here because it's really windy I don't know if you can tell on the mic, but um, you've got double helm chairs. You've got a lovely central driving position. These boats in 2007 to 2011 didn't have the Portuguese bow, but it has got sun cushions. You've got the barbecue. Now these lids were very prone to warping, uh, but this one's been redone by us. And when they're in good order like this, they look pretty good. And the teak table can look a bit um, grubby after a couple of years. But again, we've just sanded it and made it good. But look, you've got these lovely seating here. I mean, I can get probably what, four or five of us here. That's the sat TV, that's the normal sat, that's the radar. Teak floor. I mean, bear in mind, this is a 12 year old boat, Dan. I think it looks really nice. And look, even the shark likes it. It's a peach, isn't it? So let's go through all the costs, including how much we earn by selling one of these boats, which I think you're going to find quite interesting. Are you going to find it interesting, Dan? Well, I know. Oh, dear. Oh, right. Clever clogs. So let's jump straight into it. This is, um, I know what you all want to know. How much do we earn selling a boat like this? Well, it's no secret that brokerage fees in the UK vary between 5% and 8%. And that depends on the amount of work we have to do and the popularity of the model. Um, sometimes we have to work very, very hard, which means we have to um, increase our fee. And sometimes we can get a deal done quite quickly and then we will reduce our fee. But they're the general percentages that UK brokers charge. And actually, when I say UK, European wide, it's, it's quite common. So um, let's say we do a deal at 6% um, because this boat's a popular boat and we haven't had to keep her as long as some of the other boats. Um, so this boat's up at 449. Let's say we sell it at 410 for argument's sake. Um, that would generate a brokerage fee of 24,600 X VAT. But Dan, we do have costs. We do. Don't we? We do. We do. And I know what you're thinking, it's not beer costs, it's storage and berthing. So we um, quite often include the berthing and storage charges to encourage people to allow us to sell their boats here in Essex. So uh, we'll get billed those um, to us as a cost of the sale. So that's £3,000 and we're going to put these on the screen. So we've started with the 24.6, we've got a deduction of £3,000 for storage and berthing. Advertising promotion, um, yeah, we do ha actually have to promote our boats. I mean, um, obviously, we do YouTube videos, we do uh, Instagram, WhatsApp, and we do magazines. We do. We have about 12 different websites we upload to. So that's about £2,000 for a boat like this, um, which we'll put on the screen. 
overhead contributions, so um, the cost of running a business, so wages, office, phones, customer support, all those type of things, all the things we do to help um, look after our customers once they buy a boat, because believe it or not, we don't just throw you the keys and say, that's it, there's your new boat. We actually do look after them, don't we, Dan? So that's 8,600. Um, we do it on a turnover basis, so this amount of boat would generate that much overhead contribution. So if you work that all out, we get left with a, a net contribution to profit of about £11,000, which is about 3% net. So um, some deals will end up with a bit less, some deals will end up with a bit more, but that's generally speaking how much we earn from a boat like this. Okay, so section one is buying the boat. So let's carry on with that boat cost of 410,000, which we'll put on the screen. For a 410,000 pound purchase cost, you'd have to find a deposit of 123,000. That gives a finance advance, if you wanna borrow the money, of 287,000 that the bank will lend you, which gives you a payment per month of about 2,900 pounds. Um, that's based on a 15-year straight line repayment at the current interest rates, which are about 8.79% APR. And remember, that payment per month includes capital and interest, so boats don't depreciate too much, and a lot of that will be in the equity of the boat in the future. So a finance per annum is about £35,000. Section 2, fuel. So 20 knots is our average speed that we always do these figures on. The fuel burn for this boat, which has got D, twin D9575 shaft drive Volvo Penta diesels, is 140 litres per hour. The fuel price in May 2023 is about £1.75 a litre, which gives you a cost of £245 per hour. The UK European average of boat use is about 50 hours. And by the time we adjust it for a little bit of cruising out of the marina and then up to the 20 knots and back, you get an adjusted fuel cost of about £10,000 per annum, which considering you've done 50 hours at 20 knots, uh, I don't think is too terrible. So actually, and also it's really, really stable because it's shaft drive, really, really good ride. Okay, so section three is fixed costs. So the first one is berth. And a berth in the UK uh, on the south coast for this Phantom 48 would be about £12,000 per annum. The servicing of the t twin engines and the stern gear and the generator would be about £4,000 per annum. Other maintenance, polishing, upkeep of the boat, anti-foul, anodes, all those type of things is another £4,000 per annum. Insurance is a very reasonable £3,000 because it's pretty low risk. And that gives you a total of £23,000. So section four is variable costs. So depreciation, this boat isn't going to lose a lot. I've estimated it at about £10,000 per annum from this point. Fuel, well, we've already done that, is £10,000. The finance is £35,000, um, which includes capital repayment. So you've got variable costs of about £55,000 per annum. Okay, so section five is JB's measure of pleasure, where I give you my personal scores. So accommodation, well, it's a three cabin boat, so I'm gonna give it nine out of 10. Style, well, we'll show you a video of a Phantom 48 running. I think they still look good, so I'm gonna give it a eight out of 10 for style. Fun, well, a cruiser isn't really a fun boat, so I can't give it top marks, but I'm gonna give it a seven, because it's still a good bit of fun. Running costs, well, shaft drive boats use a little bit more fuel than IPS boats, but then the servicing is less, so I think it's fine on running costs. I'm gonna give it a seven. And quality, well, you know what I think of Valand quality, it's 10 out of 10, so I'm gonna give it 10. And that gives you a total score of 41 out of 50, which is 82%, which I think is really good. And one last thing, just before I go, if you're enjoying these videos, please press the subscribe button and the little bell because it makes me happy. Are you happy for everything? Yeah. Not forgotten anything? Nope. Really? I've done the cabins, done the whole lot. Okay, so what's behind the in the corner? Has he got a crew cabin? <laughs> <laughs> crew cabin. You're supposed to know what you're talking about. Crew cabin, I know.
We'll have to, you've, got to, you've, got, you've got to remind me. Oh. Yeah, it's got a little crew cabin. So, uh, this boat's got a lovely crew cabin, <laughs> which is filled with cleaning stuff and fenders. Oh, okay. And it's very, very nice.